I'm Milton Schoen and welcome to America Salutes Our Veterans. Today we have a very special guest, Tom Newman, the Department Service Officer for the American Legion. And uh, welcome to America Salutes. Thank you. And uh, to start with, uh, why don't you tell us a little bit about your military background and your background, Tom? Yeah, absolutely. Well, um, I was born and raised uh, in Minnesota. I'm a Minnesota boy. Um, I come from a, a very much a military uh, family. My um, dad was in the Marine Corps. My mom was in the Air Force. My grandparents were, were uh, in the Army. I've got brothers and sisters that were in the military. Um, I joined the National Guard out of high school um, and was in the Guard for 14 years. Um, I worked for the Guard for a period of time, full time, and worked in the Minnesota National Guard State Family Programs Office. I did that for four years, and that was right after 9-11. Uh, um, and then uh, eventually my unit um, ended up getting picked up and mobilized for a deployment to Iraq. Um, I deployed with the Minnesota National Guard 34th uh, Red Bulls uh, in 2005. Um, it was that really long extended deployment. I'm not sure if you remember that group that went out. Uh, it was a deployment that would never end, it seemed. Um, the longest deployment uh, at the time in Iraq, I think it was like ex you were extended uh, 16 months in, uh, in theater? Right, absolutely. It was a six month train up, uh, first off, um, at Camp Shelby. We were in country for a year, and then um, within three or four months of that time period concluding, um, the uh, troop surge was implemented, and we got you know, picked up on that, so that basically extended the deployment an additional four months. So all said and done, I mean, it was an extremely long deployment, and, and um, certainly um, um, have a great appreciation um, for that impact, um, not only on the soldier, but really on the families as well. It, it, um, it uh, had a lot of far-reaching effects in terms of, you know, that, that situation the way it was. Right. Well, I, I didn't see you when you demobilized at, uh, at uh, Fort McCoy, but as county veteran service officers, we made sure we were there for the 2,600 troops that came back right. to enroll. Uh, UN VA healthcare and to do a combat theater questionnaire and send that information back to the counties. And that's been a great partnership we've had with the National Guard as County Veteran Service Officers. And there's over 12,000 people who we've done that for, both Guard and Reserve, as they c came back. And uh, that is a, uh, an important piece because we knew in my day you the, had the active duty and the Guard and Reserve played a different role. I mean, they were just oh, back up in, and in Desert Storm. They were called up to backfill units often in, in, the, in mm -hmm. the states. And now, as you said, you were deployed to the, you know, the, you're part of the, the first team. And uh, uh, it, it, it was a much different situation. Right, and, and kudos to you. I, I remember being so impressed, you know, when we had landed at Fort McCoy, um, you know, there was kind of a, that initial four-day period where you kind of decompressed a little bit and we had a series of briefings to attend. Um, but it was very, very evident the support that we were getting out of Minnesota and the CVSOs that were there to talk to us um, and, and others that were there to kind of help make sure that, you know, that there were resources and folks in place to kind of ease that transition for us and our families. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Well, it's, this is a special state and we uh, were fortunate that uh, that we know how to work together and and that's one of the things that the Legion does working with the VA and working mm -hmm. with our veterans to make sure that this is a better community. Yeah, absolutely. Um, uh, I, I feel so fortunate in so many ways because you know, I had spent so much time in the Minnesota National Guard and really got to know uh, the inner workings of the Guard and, and the family programs and the, and the network of support through Beyond the Yellow Ribbon. Um, when I got back from deployment, I was, um, you know, one of those veterans that was basically in a position where I, I needed to secure uh, new employment. I wasn't, I wasn't interested necessarily going back to, um, you know, my, my older civilian employment. Um, I wanted to try something maybe a little bit different, um, but I was one of those veterans then that was in the position where, you know, I needed to secure new employment. Um, and it was in that process that I, be, I was made aware of the American Legion. At the time, they were hiring an assistant DSO um, to staff a resource office out of the Minneapolis VA Medical Center. 
and I was I was um, fortunate to um, to get the position, um, and that had really um, opened my eyes um, to a whole new world. Um, that being um, a lot of the work that's being done through our veteran service organizations, certainly the American Legion, um, but our but our partner service organizations as well, Military Order, the Purple Heart, the VFW, the DAV. Um, and again, working in partnership with the state, with the federal VA, with the Association of County Veterans Service Officers beyond the Yellow Ribbon. Um, but like I said, it's really kind of opened my eyes in terms of um, the inner workings of a veteran service organization, the work that they do, um, and, and, and the work that they get accomplished. And the difference that that makes in people's lives. Yes, absolutely. Um, and it, it's really, I think, in, in so many ways, motivated me to um, encourage veterans that may have been, um, have some, some, some preconceived notions um, as far as what service organizations do, to take the time that it's worth the investing, um, the time and the energy to get involved, to affiliate with a veteran service organization, um, find out uh, where their websites are, um, tap into your local American Legion post or via veteran service organization, um, go to the national website. Um, those are excellent um, resources as far as finding out what's happening in our veterans communities and what service organizations are doing out there. What, what, are the, what are the hot issues? What are the things that are being done? And where are there opportunities for a veteran to have their voice included in, in some of those discussions and efforts that are taking place? Well, I was fortunate enough at, at my Legion Post to, uh, to see the National Commander. And every year, the National Commander comes to Minnesota and tours posts in northern, southern Minnesota, central mm -hmm. Minnesota, and the metro area and uh, brings information about issues that are going on nationally and uh, that's a very important uh, uh, thing that is done by the Legion to just say you're an organization and the VFW other organizations do it also but to bring leadership out to explain the issues that are going on. Oh absolutely. Um, that's the National Commanders Tour. Uh, it, it happens annually on a yearly basis. Um, absolutely it's a terrific opportunity where you've got basically the the representative of the organization at the highest level um, making themselves accessible. Um, the Dan, Dillinger, Dan Dillinger is this year's commander um, and he just concluded his, his national tour, um, the commander's tour here in Minnesota and he, he was all over the state, north and south, the metro, um, and you're absolutely right. Um, relative to veteran um, happenings, you know, and, and, and in particular VA benefits and, and it's kind of my area of expertise and area that I tend to focus on a bit more um, as far as the Legion and what we do. Um, you know, veteran benefits aren't static, you know, they change. Um, there, there are um, periods of time where some of our benefits and some of the really important ones are at threat. Um, by, the, by having the national commander come out, he's basically um, uh, making himself available to basically give a perspective in terms of, hey, here are the hot issues in terms of what's happening, um, and here are our priorities, here are the things that we're trying to get addressed. And and, um, and to focus attention on the most important issues? Yes, absolutely. Okay. Yep. Well, maybe we should, uh, uh, I know in talking to you previously, uh, there are a number of interesting initiatives that the Legion has, uh, both uh, uh, events and tech with technology, sure. so maybe you could explain uh, a few of those to yeah, our viewers, I or start with one and we'll go on yeah, to the next. Yeah, absolutely. I think it's 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 critical to point out that you know that that a veteran service organization uh, such as the American Legion, we're comprised of veterans from all eras. We've got veterans that are young and old. We've got veterans that that um, you know that that are a bit older and have a different set of maybe needs and, and things that are important to them and vice versa. We've got maybe a, a, a younger vet that is a little bit different in terms of where they're at and their veteran status, you know, brand new veterans making that transition from active duty military, guard or reserve, and, you know, um, and making that transition as, as uh, you know, as veteran. Um, 
so the Legion, I think, we, is, there's several initiatives underway, and, and I think that there are several methods in which they're trying to communicate some of these initiatives, or at, or at least make uh, information accessible um, that's palatable to all our veterans, young so, and old. So uh, with that, uh, the Legion's getting on Facebook? Yes, absolutely. Um, and Facebook is so terrific. Um, but interestingly enough, you know, I think Facebook and some of the other social media that is out there and so becoming more and more prevalent um, certainly is, is very attractive to younger vets, but it's amazing to me the older veterans that um, are becoming more and more comfortable with that. Um, but yeah, absolutely, we've got um, uh, a Facebook page for the Department of the State of Minnesota, American Legion. Um, excellent resource as far as a uh, veteran plugging into the in, into our Facebook to get updates in terms of what we've got going on in the state. Um, but that's one avenue in which we, we've got a lot of information available. Um, we've also got, of course, our national magazine and our um, state newspaper, which is another um, kind of an informational source. And uh, there's a, a TBI survey that I, I'm yes. aware of. Yep, Can you absolutely. tell us about, about that? Yeah, one of the priorities right now um, out of our national organization, and I'll just kind of make it a, a distinguish something, is that as far as veteran benefits, there, there are kind of two aspects that we, that we as an organization look at benefits. We look at, you know, the VBA, the Veterans Benefits Administration, um, as kind of one side, and then we've also got the Veterans Health Administration, which is another kind of a substantial um, veteran benefit area. Um, one of the areas of emphasis um, um, and basically a priority of our national organization, especially as you, um, as we all know that TBI and PTSD, but TBI, these are some of the, the signature wounds of today's most current conflicts. The Legion is very much interested in ensuring that relative to treatments, relative to how it is that, that the VA is um, making available and administering health services, health care treatment to um, address those issues, are we on pace, you know, or do we need to take a moment to reflect, maybe see, okay, we, we've learned something now over the last 10 years, um, are we on the right course? So it's not enough to just have something on paper you need to make those benefits a reality in the life of our veterans. Yes, absolutely. There's the benefit side, but you know, the, there's the treatment side too. The Legion doesn't want to say this is the this is the treatment that should be um, pursued. What we're hoping to get is feedback from the veteran. What are their experiences? What are their outcomes? What is you know what it, what are their experiences? Um, and so we're encouraging veterans um, to basically. If they if they elect and volunteer to take to take part and participate in this survey, um, they can they can get information about the survey, its purpose, um, and they can get that information off of our national website at legion.org. Um, they can get all the information. There's additional information that'll be highlighted if um, if they look. But we've got a claims uh, coach app that uh, is intended to to help uh, people prepare to file a claim. Yeah, absolutely. To um, to kind of to basically understand some of the the nuances and the basics as far as initiating a VA disability claim. It's our hope that a veteran doesn't file a claim on their own, but they but they take some time to find out about the claim process and what's required. Um, and certainly, it's our hope in Minnesota that they use that knowledge go to their county veteran service officer and, and hopefully have a, you know, are much more likely to, to be successful presenting their claim working and, with their CSO. And then so. our county veteran service officers will designate a, in our parlance, a power of attorney. So we would designate the American Legion, the Department of Veterans Affairs, the Veterans of Foreign Wars, or the Military yes. Order of the Purple Heart so that somebody is following that claim. Yes, absolutely. And. I'm so glad you bring that up. Yeah, absolutely, so critical. Um, and yeah. not every decision that the VA makes in the end is right. right. That they're very good at what they do, but they may, the, the writer may not have the information that they need or whatever, 
And by having a claims rep representative and having the American Legion or the Veterans of Foreign Wars or the military mm -hmm. or the Purple Heart, they will call our office and, and say, you know, mm -hmm. you, you should follow up on this one. And there uh, are many cases that initially are denied that ultimately we're able to get benefits uh, for these veterans. Uh, and it's, a, it's an important structure to help uh, veterans succeed in that process. Oh yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And I think, uh, you know, a really good example of that is, you know, you can look back to our um, Vietnam veterans, for example, that had filed um, for service connection uh, for a heart condition. Um, they weren't successful maybe initially when they had filed 20 years ago, but um, again, VA benefits not being static, they change. Um, now all of a sudden you've got ischemic heart condition that's part of the presumptive list um, under exposure to Agent Orange. You know, a veteran could go back and likely um, have that corrected or have that, uh, you know, deemed or, or identified as service connected. Very good. And I, I hear that there, you're having a, a, an effort, uh, it'll probably happen before the show is aired, uh, but a revitalization effort where you're going to be uh, providing information to veterans. I think it's at the Minneapolis Richfield Post here in February. Yeah, it's a post membership and revitalization event. And it's intended to be a, uh, an event that is an opportunity for the post leadership to include the post and district to make themselves available to, um, and then to encourage veterans to basically come in, check out the post, um, meet the leadership, meet the folks that are um, representatives of the various programs of the American Legion. Um, and it's really a good opportunity to network with fellow veterans, find out about us. Find out about um, um, where there are opportunities to get information and stay informed as far as what's happening in our veterans community, but also to get involved as little or, or as much as, as you, know, and it, you would like. It may dispel some of the myths that people have. Now, yes. in my day, when I went back to school, I had 10 years to use the GI Bill. Mm -hmm. And as I understand, the new GI Bill yeah. has a longer period of time, and you were telling me there's a reason for that. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, it's 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 so interesting and, and um, it's so, I guess, encouraging that there are conversations taking place in terms of, you know, assessing the needs of veterans, um, but from all our eras. And I think that it's been identified um, through discussions, through collaborations, through um, seeking veteran input. And, um, and I, I, I think you had said that the 15-year delimiting date was put in place because 15 percent of the people in the military now are women and they come back they have a family mm -hmm. for five or six years and in the old GI Bill they didn't have much time to get an education now now they've got yeah. a much longer time. You look back in the way the the, the you know the older uh, version of the GI Bill was you had to use it within four years we've learned since then and now I think yeah it's, it's discovered that well, in our, uh, in our last 30 seconds, if, we, if you were to leave us with one thought, uh, uh, what would that be, Tom? Um, please take time to, to learn about your service organizations. They work for you. Um, we're only as strong as those that are members. Um, um, I, again, encourage veterans to take the time to, to, um, to get information about who we are. Visit us on Facebook, uh, Department of Minnesota American Legion. Go to our uh, national or state website, legion.org. Excellent uh, sources of information. Very good. And uh, that will conclude this segment of America Salutes, and we'll be back in a moment. Thank you.